For this video, you want to turn in your books to page 495. We're going to cover Investigation 2, Reasoning to Equivalent Expressions. I would like you to read these three paragraphs, so this section right here, and then once you've read it, you can turn the video back on, and then I'll just highlight some important points. Okay, so basically what this is talking about is how you're able to compare different forms of quadratics. For example, we could look at a quadratic that is graphed, and we could look at a quadratic that is in the form of a table, and compare the table to the graph and show that the graph is the same as the table because the points on the table match up with the points on the graph. So that's what it's talking about here in this section. Then it says, well, now what we want to do is since you can compare a graph to a table, we want you to be able to compare two equations. And you should be able to look at one form and say that is equivalent to another form. So in these problems, you're going to look at equivalent values of quadratic expressions. So you're going to look at one example that shows it in one form. For example, here's one form, and here's another form of a linear function. And we're going to do that for quadratic functions. So we're going to go ahead and look at number one, but let's read the directions for what we're supposed to do. Use the distributive property to expand and combine like terms to write each of the following expressions in equivalent standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Be prepared to explain your reasoning in each case. Now, we've done a lot of examples like this in class, so we're just going to go through the example set to refresh your memory of how to use the distributive property. So what we do is we take the value that is on the outside of the parentheses, and then we multiply it by each piece that is within the parentheses. So we take 3, and we multiply it by the x. And then we add to that 3 multiplied by, oh, sorry, x multiplied by x. So we get 3x plus x squared. And that's our total. So you can see that the x that's on the outside has been multiplied by everything on the inside. So it was multiplied by the 3 on the inside, and was also multiplied by the x that is inside the parentheses. Number 1b, we take 5x, and we multiply it by everything that's in the parentheses. So I take 5x, and I copy it down twice and I multiply the 5x times 4x, and then I multiply the 5x by negative 11, and then I put an addition sign in between. So it becomes 20x squared plus negative 55x. Okay, so then from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 20x squared minus 55x, because adding a negative is the same as subtracting. So we get 20x squared minus 55x. All right, number 1c, we take what's on the outside and we multiply it by everything that's on the inside of the parentheses. So I take 7x and I multiply it by 11. And then I take the 7x and I multiply it by negative 4x. And I get 77x plus negative 28x squared. And for this, you need to remember your exponent rules. When the bases are the same, you add them up. So the power becomes a 2. 1 plus 1 gives you 2. So we get 77x minus 28x squared. Because adding a negative is the same as subtracting. All right, 1d. 7x times x gives you 7x times x, 7x squared. Then we take 7x and multiply it by 2, and we get 14x. And then we carry down the negative 19, or the subtraction of 19, and we get 7x squared plus 14x minus 19. All right, letter E, negative 9 multiplied by 5, we get negative 45. Negative 9 times a negative 3x is a positive 27x. 
And then we're going to add to that 7x times x, which is 7x squared, and then 28x. From here, we're able to combine like terms. So you'll see that we have 27x and we have 28x. Together, we get 55x. There is no other term that is like 7x squared because the x squared has a power of 2. There's no other term that is like the negative 45. So all I do is I copy those two below, 7x squared plus 55x minus 45. And I get my total. 1f, now this is more difficult because it has all variables, but we're going to follow the same process. We take mx and we multiply it by x. Then I add to that mx multiplied by n, and then I tack on the variable p at the end. So we get mx squared, when the bases are the same, you add them up, you add the exponents. Then we have mxn plus the variable p. None of these terms are like terms, so they cannot be combined, so this is the final result. And now we're ready for section two. For number two, I want you to look back at your book so you can look at the directions. The directions are on page 496, and it says use the distributive property to write each of these quadratic expressions in equivalent form as a product of two linear factors. Be prepared to explain your reasoning in each case. So in number two, we are factoring. So before, we were using the distributive property to multiply through, and now we're going to break it apart. So what you need to do is you want to look at each of these terms and you want to think about what they have in common. They have no factor in common between 7 and 11, but the x they have in common. So they have a factor of x in common. So we know that we're going to pull out a factor of x. Then what you do is you think about what you multiply x by to get 7x squared. So I multiply x by 7x to get 7x squared, so 7x would be placed here. Next, I'm going to multiply x by some value to get negative 11x. And the coefficient I would place in the parentheses, the negative 11. So I'm going to subtract 11. The sign of this value always tells you what goes after the 7x. So it's subtraction in this case because we had a negative 11 down here. You can always go back and you can check your work. So we multiply through x times 7x would give us 7x squared. x times negative 11 would give us negative 11x. So we did this correctly. The factored form is x times 7x minus 11. So we call this factored form. Let's go ahead and place 2b in factored form as well. So again, we want to look at each term, and we want to think about what do those terms have in common? What factors do they have in common? And remember, factors just mean um, the parts of a multiplication problem. So it's, you know, 4 times 2 equals 8. 4 would be a factor of 8. 2 would be a factor of 8 because it's a part of a multiplication problem. Um, we could say for 21, the factors would be 3 and 7. So 3 would be a factor, 7 would be a factor. They are multiplied together to get 21. So 12x, we take 3, multiply it by 4x. Over here, the 4x squared can be written out as 4 times x times x. So what you can see that they have in common is they have an x and they have a 4. So 1x and 1, 4. So I'm going to put on the outside, 4x is going to be our factor that we pull out. So we think 4x times what gives us 12x, and that number would be 3. So I'm going to put 3 in the parentheses. Then I write out, for this portion, 
4x multiplied by what gives you 4x squared? And 4x times x will give you 4x squared. And it's a positive x, so I'm going to write plus x. Again, go back and check. 4x times 3 will give you 12x. 4x times x will give you 4x squared. So we completed this correctly, and we just found the factored form of the problem. Okay, 2c, let's find the factored form of negative 3x squared minus 9x. When you look at these, hopefully you can see that they both share a factor of 3, and they both have a factor of x. If you'd multiply these out, and I'm just going to write these as positive values, it would be 3 times x times x, and then 9x would be written 3 times 3 times x. And they share a factor of 3, and they share a factor of x. So 3x is what we're going to put on the outside of the parentheses. After that, what we're going to do is we're going to write 3x, and we're going to say, all right, 3x multiplied by what is going to give me the first term, negative 3x squared. So 3x times a negative x will give me negative 3x squared. So I put up here negative x, and then I'm going to deal with this piece, and I'm going to ask myself, what can I multiply by 3x to get negative 9x? And in this case, the answer is negative 3. So I go ahead and I put in negative 3, or minus 3. At the end, you want to go back and you want to check your work to make sure that you produce the correct factored form. 3x times negative x, that will give us negative 3x squared. 3x times negative 3 gives us negative 9x, so that also works. You can also look back at what's on the inside of the parentheses and look at it and, and try to figure out if you pulled out all the factors. You are also allowed to pull out a factor of negative 1. So if I wanted to, I could go back and I could pull out a factor of negative 1 as well. So 3x, and then I want to pull out a factor of negative 1. So then I multiply that by x plus 3, because negative 1 times x will give me negative x. So that's why I put x up here. And then if I think about it, negative 1 times 3 will give me negative 3. So that's where I got these two values from. Then we multiply 3x times negative 1, and we get negative 3x multiplied by x plus 3. And I also could have originally just saw, all right, they both have a negative, so I could pull out a negative 1, and I could have said originally that my factor was negative 3x instead of 3x. With the negative 1, it doesn't matter. You can pull it out, or you can choose not to pull it out. It doesn't matter either way. Just be consistent. Right, 2D. Um, in this case, we have all variables. When we look at this, the factors that they have in common, actually I should say factor that they have in common, is just x. So they both share this factor of x. So we're going to pull an x out, and then we ask ourselves what we multiply by x to get ax squared, and that would be ax. Then I'm going to ask myself what I multiply by x to get bx, and that would be the variable b. And it's positive, so up here it's going to be addition. And again, go back and check your work. x times ax will give you ax squared. x times b will give you xb, which according to the commutative property of multiplication can also be written as bx. The commutative property of multiplication says that you can switch the order. So we did that correctly. And now we're on to 3. I'm going to save 3 for the next video.